What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, my name is Ben Fellows. I run Loop Software and Testing Services. We do a lot of work with player aid automation. We also do a lot of manual testing for uh, startups, enterprise companies, kind of all over the place. So today, just wanted to share a little bit about how we approach working with dates. So first things first is that oftentimes uh, when we are coming up against a problem sort of that a lot of people probably have had, we turn to node modules just like anybody probably should. Um, so the most common for dates is we use the date and time node module. Um, shout out to, to whoever uh, supports this. I probably should know that knowledge code it looks like. Um, and you can see good documentation, well supported, uh, and then has a lot of nice API functions. So. A um, couple use cases we're going to go through. One is going to be uh, booking something for today, booking for the nearest uh, weekday, and then booking for something in the future comparatively to, to now, right? Um, anytime you have to work with dates, though, it's, I'm trying to think of like a lot of different use cases, right? Booking, um, reserving, which is basically booking, um, I mean, basically changing something, or, uh, sessions and stuff like that, right? So um let's quickly talk through it uh so what we're going to do is require the library date and time you're going to see a different library down here that we also use but we'll just get into that um we're going to basically create a constant of today so we're going to call that now and um i actually think that i found some of this in some documentation um and i, I want to try to find the link and put it in the description of somebody else had given a really nice example so a shout out that person and i hope i can find you um, but what we're going to do is basically declare today as say now, and then we're going to format it however we want to format it. So one of the things to note about when we're doing date and time is we're going to use that date in a specific way later. So in our case, we're actually going to put the date into our, uh, locator here as an argument to use the locator, then click on the proper day. And what's really valuable about that is you now have this essentially dynamic locator that will always work um, with the, the, whatever date you're putting into it, right? Um, and this is actually a calendar module that comes up. It shows a nice little kind of uh, set of dates. And then we basically tell it, okay, we actually only want today's actual set of days, the two, the two uh, characters for the days, right? Um, and, and so what you can see is start formatted. It's actually then used in the argument. So today, very straightforward, right? Now, and then basically as we pull it down, we're going to format it how we want to specifically format it. The next one's kind of an interesting use case. So think about this. When you operate and you work with dates, oftentimes there are situations where weekends could have different um, behavior than weekdays. And that's just something that is kind of the reality of most applications. Now, in a lot of test cases that I've seen, it's kind of like they operate with like today plus four, or today plus five. Well, the problem with that is you never really can guarantee what day of the week you're operating on. And therefore, you can see different behavior um, depending on when you run it. If for some reason you do have a situation where you have weekends set up in the config to be different than weekdays. Now you can kind of get around that by, you know, trying to go through the hoops of, of trying to set up your config to only see different behavior. But, you know, there's actually a cleaner solution. And that is going to basically be to always find the nearest day associated with a, a date. So you can see we're going to do the same thing where we're going to acquire date and time, and then we have uh, uh, creating actually today, and then we bring in this new library, which is called get nearest day of the week. Shout out to everybody who maintains that. And what that basically does is it takes a date, and then you give it a number corresponding to the day of the week that you want to find, and it will then basically give you um, the new date that is that nearest day of the week. And then what we do is we basically declare that as a new constant. And then we actually pass that constant back through the original date and time library to format it how we want to format it. And next thing you know, we're using that again. So this has actually been super useful for us for basically being able to have situations very easily where we don't really have to worry about knowing is this going to fall on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday not the end of the world, but there are a lot of situations where like we'll deal with something where it's 
a repeating event, right? And that repeating happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And what you choose for the test might depend on the kind of date and the day of time you are. And it's just much easier in general to always choose the next Monday, right? Because that means you can always kind of guarantee you know what you're operating in. You can know, okay, is tomorrow going to be Tuesday? Is the next day going to be Wednesday? And when those icons show up to please, do you want to repeat every Tuesday? Yep, it's going to be perfect, right? Um, and then last but not least is going to be an example called book tomorrow. And in this head, it could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. It could be 10 days. It could be, you know, 180 days. Um, that is going to be, uh, basically as simple as doing the same thing, but we're going to use the function add days, right? So we're going to have date and time. We're going to find today. We're going to add days to today. We're going to give it the number of days we want to add to today. And then we're going to format it and use it. So um, very, very straightforward. And, and one of my favorite things about Node is just these libraries are just so easy to use. And they're well documented in so many cases. Um, there's going to be another video I'm going to work on is just how do you deal with um, daylight savings time and knowing are you in daylight savings time? Are you not in daylight savings time? And sort of having the automation uh, be able to make the appropriate choices based on that. That's just using another node module though, and it's pretty straightforward. So um, what we just covered is working with dates and how we do it at Whoop. Hope it was helpful. If you do have any questions, comment on below. Um, and always, it really does help if you can subscribe to the videos and like. This is still very new for me, so any feedback you have is, is appreciated. So hope to uh, connect soon.